So the last time we were here, you didn't know what was happening with your health and you wanted to find someone you could trust. Right. I don't know if you guys heard I had uh, uh, um, lung cancer. Oh. Yeah. Because I want uh, my kids to reap the benefits of this collection. Both my parents died of lung cancer. Um, lung cancer is ruthless. Hmm. It's one of the cancers that we, ch we just can't figure out. And even if you get it early, it's just the outlook is not good. And when I left here last time, I promised him that I would sell those cards for the most amount of money and take the least amount of commission and give it to his kids. All right, so we just pulled some cards out of your safe. There it is. Roman Mantle. Look at that bad boy. Such a good card. Not just one, but two. <laughs> Okay, so I'm here in San Diego with my good friend, Marcel. Again, we're on the road, this has been great. Uh, we're here in San Diego getting ready to go see a card shop, a collection, a guy that you know. It's gonna be a fun journey. You excited about this? Oh, I'm so excited. That card shop, I mean, that looks like fun, you know? Coffee and cards, and <laughs> you and me love our coffee. We, we love, love our, our cards, yeah. <laughs> so, that was cute. It's good. <laughs> We got referred to Ross's Coffee and Sports Cards, two of my favorite material things in this world. This shop is spectacular. It's cool, right? So cool, it's so cool. How's the coffee? Coffee's good, pour overs. I mean, I'm hooked, I'm hooked. We're gonna give you a, a quick tour and tell Ross to give us a story. Let's go check it out. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Thanks for bringing Thanks us for in. in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. First impressions, it's like, this is fresh. You got you got the pour overs and you got the, the yes. glass cases out. What's going on here? What, how long have you been around? So five months, um, wanted a coffee shop with card shop, okay. always. We just went for it and just said, we're just gonna open one. Got into it during the pandemic and I'm like, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to make the best coffee around and get beans from Kona and so me and Jeff just make coffee and hang out. So you opened five months ago. Markets changed a lot. You know you've been in the Markets cards a little bit. Changed. How how do you feel with kind of where sports cards are? Worried? See, no. So we don't see what kind of everybody else is yeah. talking about because we see people come in and they're so stoked and they're getting into it. So we're like building it. it hasn't slowed down for us. Okay. Um, it's picked up more and more word of mouth. People are talking about it. Uh, yeah, it's been awesome. That's incredible. I've heard some uh, rumors that sports players come in here, some popular players. Some athletes come in here, yep. Can you name them? Uh, Drew Brees comes in, Joe Staley, Brett Boone. Okay. Larry Kristoviak, that's his uh, his Scottie Pippen game worn stuff. He played with the Bulls when Jordan wasn't there, so he didn't okay. get a ring. Um, so yeah, we, we get we get athletes that come in. Russell Wilson lives close? Wilson lives close, still waiting for him to come in, yep. Um, I'm a big, like, Chemex guy, so we're weighing out the beans, the water, we got an awesome filter system. I'm just like a nut about it. I'm like a, I'm like a little chemist back here trying to make the best coffee. Where, where do you get your beans from? So direct from Kona, a okay. little, little farm uh, in Kona, and just a married couple, they're growing their own beans and they ship direct to us. So they do like the Four Seasons in, in Kona, Disney, and then, and I'm sure some other places yeah. but with us, and so it's, it's not cheap, it's $50 a pound, but. Whoa! Yeah, it's expensive. But I'm like, look, I'm gonna, if I'm I want good right. coffee, why not? You know? You're not so, messing around, I love it. Yeah. You mentioned community earlier, so what other events do you do? Do you break for the community, anything? That so we're do? doing breaks on Tuesday nights. Okay. Um, that's been fun. We'll probably expand because that's, it's starting to take off for us. We had our first trade night here. Tons of kids getting into it, trading their cards, and uh, it was super successful. We had such a good turnout, mm. giveaways, things like that. So we'll start doing more and more of that. So I'm getting you another cup. <laughs> <laughs> Just we're gonna yeah. double fist yeah, it. Yeah. So this is Brett Swain. So he played for the Packers, okay. won a Super Bowl with him. 
That's his Super Bowl game worn jersey and helmet. So he's a regular in here. Okay. Another guy. Um, so that's really cool, special to us. Um, these gloves, I love having uh, stuff from just vintage. And so I uh, picked up these gloves that people can buy and have in their showcase. And then my favorite stuff in the shop is this Piedmont box, cigarette box with the, the pack. The pack's open, so it's not like an unopened pack. Yeah. But I just thought it was cool to have Piedmont box, um, the cigarette pack, and the Piedmont Walter Johnson. Heck which, yeah. You know, well, cool, man. Well, thank you for having us in. This is super hey, unique. Great meeting you. Where yeah. can people find you? We're in Encinitas. Encinitas, California. Uh, we're North County. Um, Ross Cards and Coffee, Facebook, Instagram. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's Jake, not Ross. Jake, Jake Ross. Jake Ross. So, yep. two first names. I dig <laughs> it. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. That was awesome. Marcel and I hopped in the car, hyped up on caffeine, ready to go see our next collection, and our excitement was almost unspeakable. 75 degrees, sunny, with a little breeze, amazing. <laughs> all right so it wasn't that boring i promise we actually have a really good time with marcel but it is time to put our game faces on and get ready for the next collection so tell me about mario i met him once but we sat down for quite a bit of time uh very interesting he uh his story and how he started collecting if if i'm right if i remember right i think he he worked for the post office for most of his life. Um, and his story is just great, but he's got a lifetime collection. Okay. And uh, it's mostly vintage, and vintage is always beautiful. Good to go? Yeah, let's go. Wow, this, wow, this, this is insane. Mario. Hey, hi. How I'm you Ty. doing? Ty, hey, nice to meet you. meet you. You know Marcel? Marcel, yeah. yes. Nice to see you again, Mario. <laughs> you too. Thank you too. You. Come on in. You picked perfect weather for us. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got out of the hobby in uh, about 80, 1982, 83. Okay. Because the market was getting flooded. Not only was it Tops, Bowman got back into it. You had Fleer, you had Donruss. My God, uh, in the 80s, it was, uh, you'd have 10, 15 side sets other than the regular, you know, set that just came out. But, you know, to me, the, the 80s cards, 90s, and, and even, they're just a bunch of junk. First take of Mario, incredibly impressed with his knowledge of sports cards. You can just tell he loved cards. He loved the hobby. He loved being kind of integrated with the community and he was a part of the early stages of the card community, which you don't hear very often, even from collectors who bring out their stuff. It was more just surface level, but Mario was really in tune with the hobby 40 years ago, which I'm excited to kind of take some notes and learn from him. In my day, that when you went to the service and went to college, your mothers threw those cards away. <laughs> they were gone, okay? They weren't worth anything. They didn't start getting worth something until, uh, um, the early 70s. Yeah. Um, you know, since you've seen the 63, I can, I can bring it out and it, cause it has the uh, Pete Rose rookie in it. So anytime I hear someone say they're pulling something out of their safe for the first time or second time in 40 years, my heart starts pacing a little bit faster because I'm thinking this is going to be an experience with him just as much as it is with me because he's going to be seeing cards that take him back to his childhood and take him back, back to spots in his life. I'm just excited to see what he loved. And it sounds like he really took care of his cards and to find vintage and good condition and to go through that with him is just gonna be a, a really unique time. All right, so we just pulled some cards out of your safe and these are some of the ones that you love the most. I mean, this is a fraction of your sets. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. What are you, what are you gonna show us here? These cards here 
are just basically cards that I don't have complete sets of. I just have them there, there's singular, you know, cards from other sets. So um, I do have Gaudi uh, cards from 1933. I probably have about 60 of them. But uh, wow. here's some that are from that set, oh, 33 yeah. Gaudis. Lou Gehrig, couple Babe Ruth. So when did you got these in the 70s? You bought them from a collection? Or did you I go got, to the show I, and yeah, I bought them from an older person, okay. of course, for, uh, that he collected as a kid. And uh, I think he had 60 of them. And I, I was <laughs> able to buy those for, of, this, of all the 60 of them, I got for $50. Yeah, that but that's in 1973. So why didn't you ever get these graded? What's your take on oh, well, grading? Uh, you worked at the post office. Was I it? worked for the post office, so I know you know there's no there was no storefront for um, taking your cars to PSA. Okay. Uh, they told me because I called them up. They told me put them in the mail, put them in holders like this, and put them <laughs> in the mail, you know, in a box or something yeah. like that. And I've said no way. I'm not going to do. He's working work, at the post office. Right? I work for the post office. <laughs> so if you were to send in cards like in a box or a shorter box or whatever, we take these boxes and look at the address. Okay, 92126, and you throw it into the bin where it goes. Okay. And if you're going to have baseball cards in here. Yeah. And, uh, that's just it was a hard no for you, right? Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. Send my per, my cards personally in, in a in a in a uh, box and and let the employees you know throw these things. They just don't go over to the box and you know <laughs> no, they don't do that. Okay, that's a good looking fifty seven. Yeah, I came from New York before I came here to San Diego, and I moved here when I was five years old to San yeah. Diego. I remember going to the store and buying baseball cards when I was five years old or four mm. years old. And, you know, nickel a pack, you get five cards. So when I was uh, 10, 11, 12, you know, the way of uh, flipping cards against the wall, you toss them like this, like a Frisbee. And once they hit this, the, the wall, you know, they would fall or whatever. And then it's this person's turn and he's trying to land on top of this card once you land on a card there might be 50 60 cards out there or you know just 10 cards but once a person lands on a card they win the whole pot and that's i was pretty good at that growing up and that's how i mostly got my collection from the original flipping is much more interesting to me exactly when i uh, went to my mom and dad's house to look for my cards that i grew up with mm -hmm. you know to you know to see if i still had my collection yeah uh, my mom says if they were anywhere, they'd be in the drawer, you know, in your room. Yeah. And they weren't there except for a little shoe box with maybe a, a hundred or so cards. So you bought cards in really good condition. Are you, it seems like you were focused on finding cards in good well, condition. Well, these are cards that I bought, you know, when I was 22 years, 1973, 74, 75. Yeah. And I only bought cards that were in great condition like this. Here's a Reg, Reggie Jackson 67 uh, uh, rookie. Here's a 64 Mantle, uh, 54 uh, Mays. 64 Willie Mays yeah. signed, autographed. How did you? How did that happen? Did you get it signed? No, I didn't get it okay, signed. You it bought it like signed. that. Yeah. Wow. T tell me this real quick. So this is a that's Hires a, Root Beer. Hires Root Beer. It's a regional set back in New York. Yeah. I don't think it was in, in Los Angeles because they had the Bell brand potato chip cards, if you mm. ever, ever heard of those. Okay. Though that was a, a regional set for Bell brand potato chips. See some uh, Bowman coming okay, up. Okay, here's the there's 52 the, there it is. Bowman Mantle. Look at that bad boy. Such a good card. Incredible condition cards. I, I, I know he knows they're in good condition, but I know these cards are gonna grade really well. Unfortunately, you have to just help people understand that when you think it's a 10, in this world, it's just not. And for someone to say, hey, it's a perfect card, but it's gonna grade a seven, it's hard for someone to swallow. Only way to maximize value is gonna be to spend the time grading them. I'm really curious to see how the conversation kind of goes the next 15 minutes to see if there's an opportunity to make a deal. Here's a rookie satchel fake. Uh, oh boy. 49. Yeah, yeah, this thing is 
This looks good. Yeah. That looks real good. Oh my goodness. Uh, here's a couple of Ted Williams cards from the yeah. 50, 50 Bowman set. Not just one, but two. <laughs> My set of 50 Bowmans is almost complete. Wow. It's almost complete. And then I have a second uh, set that is not really in great condition. Not like these cards here. Yogi mm. Berra. Yeah. 50 Bowmans. Mm. Uh, Jackie Robinson, 50 Bowman. Ooh. And Roy Campanella, 50 Bowman. This is a card you don't see pop up very often. No, pardon me? You don't see this very often. No. Oh my goodness, the 1950 Bowman. I don't think I've seen one of these in the collection ever. And so to see it in person, I love that card. This is Jerry West's rookie yeah. card. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that's a... 61, 61, 62 61, season. 61, yeah. okay. Yep. That's a beautiful card. Now did you go sets with basketball too? I don't have any complete sets in basketball. So in that set, you'll have the Chamberlain. Right, you have the Baylor, Elgin uh, Baylor. I, Potentially, I, I, I don't know if you have. I think I do have the Elgin Baylor, and I do have the um, Bob Cousy. Oh, a cool. Cousy's. Okay. Yeah. This card here, I think it was called a double header. Oh, uh, yes, that folds out, right? It folds out. Yeah. And it's basically a card of Dale Long and Ferris Fane. So t tell me, tell me about why you're even considering moving it. Basically, I'm doing this because uh, when I'm dead and gone, I feel that Marcel will be the guy that will move this for my kids, mm -hmm. you know, and taking a, uh, a certain percentage after you move it, whether you go through auctions with Golden or you know, whatever your your idea of, uh, of getting rid of the, these cards to people that are interested in buying it. Is that something that uh, I think you were mentioning that you'd be interested in doing if we, we did come up with a price or so? Sure, 100%. First off, let me say thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, like, such an honor. And I don't take it lightly. So just thank you. Mm -hmm. um, sure thing. Really. I, I, I feel I that you're very it. honest. Thank you. That yeah. just, that means a lot to me. Uh, and I will. There's um, a bunch of sharks out there. And there are. Yeah. So the last time we were here, what I remember, and I might be wrong, um, you were you were a little more motivated, I think, to sell. I feel like maybe you're in a different place. Um, you were thinking to sell. You didn't know what was happening with your health, and you wanted to find someone you could trust. Right. Not to where I was ready to sell or anything, because I want... Uh my kids to reap the benefits of this collection. And of course I've had, you know, with my, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, I had uh, uh, um, lung cancer. Oh. Yeah. And since that time, what was that? Uh, when you heard about it? It was April of love. Okay, God, almost, yeah, about six, seven months ago at least. Wow. And since that time, I've beaten it so far and my scans mm -hmm. come out completely clear. I'm doing what I, I've i always done even before I got sick. And, you know, walking on the beach for five, six, seven miles. And uh, I feel like I never had the illness now. So you had cancer. I had cancer. Beat it. Beat it. And you're just monitoring I don't it. know if you ever can say that you beat it. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. uh, the drugs that they uh, used, uh, you know, other than the chemo, the Keytruda, you know, the, the what do you call that, hon? Uh, immunotherapy. immunotherapy was big time. But of course, that attacks your immune system and your joints, and I have the effects of that. And uh, that's not fun because I'm always feeling uh, mm. sore, you know, from that because it attacks your joints and immune system but it's better than being six feet under you know what i mean so, <laughs> <laughs> so i'll, I'll take the that's story. the truest yeah. statement i'll of take the, the pain yeah. that comes with it and all yeah. so yeah so if you were to sell it what what is it for your kids for your family is oh yeah the idea yeah there? yeah 
Would you be leaving cards with the kids? Any cards that you want to keep in the family, or is it is it are yeah, they not collectors and don't care? They're not collectors. Okay. No. You know, no. What you see is uh, what's going to. You know, this is only a small part of it, of course. I think it's great that Mario wants to keep this in the family or use the funds to help the family down the line, and he's looking at Marcel as the guy that he trusts to handle that for him. And I think Marcel's the perfect guy for that because he makes really good decisions when it comes to sports cards. So the way Mario is processing it, I think it's probably the best way to handle it right now. Those have some worth. People are serious about those three series yeah, cards. Especially in good condition. this set is, yeah, because of the fame that uh, yeah. the Three Stooges had. At PSA, less than 2,000 total cards have been graded of the first three cards, Larry, Moe, and Curly. Number one, Curly, PSA 8, recently sold for $7,322. The PSA 9 of number two, Mo, sold for $3,050. Over the last 20 years, only 16 PSA 9s have ever come out of that set and zero PSA 10s. How about that for scarcity? A collector, when we had our first um, apartment in 1973 he lived on the street behind us in claremont here he had five complete sets of 1960. i bought all five of them for 25 dollars have you heard enough yet well this is exactly why we chase cardboard it's because of these stories they're just so fun to sit back and enjoy because guys like mario built the foundation of the hobby as we know it today now, why uh, 630, Roberto? Clemente's Clemente. That's probably the best card in the set. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think, yeah, Mantle's already retired. Yeah, P. Rose is probably second. There's just too many cards out there to collect nowadays. And yeah, I just feel that the cards of today will never be worth what these are because these are so rare and there's so few of them around. Now there's millions of cards made nowadays yeah. in the years. What are you thinking, man? What are you thinking? Well, you seem to connect emotionally to him as I was watching you. Yeah, so um, I remember now the last time I was here, this is his second bout with cancer. Okay. Um, the last time I was here, if I remember correctly, he was just getting off chemo or he was on chemo. And um, it just really, um, I mean, I almost wanted to cry in there. It almost makes me cry. Why is that? And I don't... You know, my, both my parents died of lung cancer. Um, lung cancer is ruthless. Hmm. It's one of the cancers that we, ch we just can't figure out. And even if you get it early, it's just the outlook is not good. And when I left here last time, I promised him that I would sell those cards for the most amount of money and take the least amount of commission and give it to his kids. That's what I think I wanted. I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, so when we go back in there, what? How do you want to? How do we want to address this? Is it a consignment that you're going to handle that you feel like you need to do for their family, or is it let's wait and see how his health goes and if he's ready to do it, we'll do it later. What I would like to do, and I'm going to try and convince him, I, I would like him to let us take a set with us now. Mm -hmm. One set or some set, something. Because I want him to see what we're going to do for him and or his family. And even though he feels like he trusts us now and he believes in what we're going to do for him, I want him to... I want him to see it, right? He wants to wait until he passes and have us take care of it. That's what he basically said in there. Yeah. Um, I want him to see now that he can rely on us when that time comes to pass, that you and I will be there for him. So mm -hmm. that's what I want to do, but it's his call ultimately. Yeah. I agree, I agree. I think this is one of those things we're not gonna come up with the cash for it. It's not how we feel like we're supposed to handle it. You're connected to him emotionally. You want to handle it the absolute perfect way for him. Let's go see how he handles it. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so we talked about just your memories and all of the history you have tied up in these cards. Mm -hmm. 
one day when you pass away, hopefully 20, 30 years from now, and your kids look back and think about you as a collector, dad as a collector, what do you think they, what do you hope they think of? All the pain and uh, all the hours that I spent sorting cards that I bought, I brought home when basically me and my wife Diane didn't have a pot to piss in, so to speak. You know what I mean? It was where when we first got married, it was, you know, touch and go. Um, and But I wasn't putting my rent money into all this. These cards were very low in, in, in not value, but I bought them next to nothing. Yeah. You know, pennies on the dollar. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's a legacy that, uh, that I, uh, love baseball that much and yeah. most sports in general. And, uh, so a lot of, uh, a lot of time went into this for it in such a short period of say eight years or something like that, that I was in this, into this hobby. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's yeah. very neat. Yeah. Well, we have a couple suggestions uh, to kind of yeah. help. I, I don't know what you're thinking, but Marcel had some good ideas, but I'll let you kind of handle it, Marcel. You've got sets. You've got a set here that we think in the condition it is right now, it's probably a $7,500 set mm -hmm. with the rose graded. It's probably a $10,000 set, mm -hmm. but with all the other cards graded, could it be a twelve, fourteen, sixteen thousand dollars set? Maybe. But mm -hmm. right now, for example, on this set, it's mm -hmm. probably worth around $7,500. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we probably have to pay you about 60% of 7,500. Because we would go and sell it for the most part on eBay, mm -hmm. and eBay's gonna take close to 15%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understandable. So yeah. really what that leaves on the table for us is that different mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. if you have a hundred percent pie you take 15 percent i give you 60 percent mm -hmm. yeah right so now there's only 25 percent left mm -hmm. i we could go through all your cards and do that through mm -hmm. all your sets and do that mm -hmm. but then all the upside would be left to us right where we going to we're going to do all the work we're going right. to grade the cards wait for them to come back right. try and market it after if you know, that's what I told you that day. If you wanted to participate in the upside, it would be a long process. And I, I, I would do that for you, Tyler, and I would do that mm -hmm. for you. And this is the thing, not every card always needs to go to the same grader. Mm -hmm. When I look at your card, there are different markers, and I showed you that day, that PSA will give you a five on this card, but BGS will give you a six. Okay. And sometimes I remember you saying that. You have to consider yeah. that sometimes, right? Yeah. Because that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. um, so those are all things that I, uh, Tyler, and I could do for you. Um, and I, I, by the way, I've known Tyler forever. He's mm -hmm. one of my dearest friends. So um, he would, I trust him with everything mm -hmm. uh, and so should you if you trust me then mm -hmm. you should trust mm -hmm. Tyler so um, so we can approach this two ways but I think now what you're saying is I don't want to I don't want to sell anything that's okay by the way I don't want to sell anything um, I want to wait I want to wait till they have to sell it mm -hmm. is that I mean that's kind of where you're at maybe yeah here, here yeah. now I'm just talking honest and openly yeah. with you and I, I, it's better if you watch over the sale in your time. I don't know when that's going to be, mm -hmm. but I can tell you with mm -hmm. my collection, mm -hmm. I'm not going to leave it to my kids and mm -hmm. have, I'm not going to leave it to them and then tell them to go to my trusted source to sell it. When it gets, if I'm able to, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> when it gets close to that moment, I'm going to sell my collection. Mm -hmm. Only you know what you have. Mm -hmm. And when I sit here and I show you the average sale number mm -hmm. and we sure. talk about that card and then we grade it and then you're able to process it right mm -hmm. and understand, okay, Marcel's doing the best or this or that. Mm -hmm. 
if if I leave it up to my kids, mm -hmm. one of them's going to want quick money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. One of them's not. I've given that to them. Right. Also. One of them's going to get. Even though I say here, let Tyler sell everything, right? Mm -hmm. One of them's going to go take it to Joey Smith down the street because his husband said to, yeah. and I don't want that. I'm going to watch my collection sell. So I suggest that you think about that. Sure. Here's the other thing I want to tell you. Okay. If I take a set right now, mm -hmm. let's say we grade the eight best cards. Mm -hmm. So you give it to me. Mm -hmm. I send it in. Mm -hmm. By the time they come back, right? By the time I get it listed online, in my store, on the website, or on his website, that's two months. Right? Mm -hmm. Then it's up. If this set is worth fifteen to twenty thousand and I put it up for sale for let's say fifteen on the low end, it could still take six months to find the right, right. buyer. Earlier when you said that you trust me. Mm -hmm. I remember what I said to you when you, we were here last, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say it to you again. Um so for the very same reason. My mother and father both died of lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And what I told you here a year ago is the same I'm going to tell you today. I will do everything in my power mm -hmm. to sell your cards mm -hmm. for the most I can. Mm -hmm. And I will take as least as humanly possible as long as it's just within the realm of fairness. Mm -hmm right because it's going to take me time okay but i will do the best for you and sure. you can trust me yeah. and if i let and if not if i let and if tyler is a part of it then you're going to be taken care of as well okay, okay? so you could you just got to think about it but i'm giving you advice because i've seen this too many times and if you don't handle the sell of it yourself it's not going to get handled the way you want it handled mm -hmm. and that's just a shame yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, at that moment, right? I don't want my kids to fight over it, whether one wants to sell or hold on to it to make it go up higher or what, it, you know, whatnot. So just my, my two cents on this too. He came out and said, I, I don't want to do a cash offer. Mm -hmm. For the sole reason that we walk into so many collections and the one thing that's always missing is condition. Mm -hmm and you took such good care of your cards for the only way you can maximize your money mm -hmm. is if we grade the cards. Mm -hmm. And if we bought it with cash, we would be saying all the upside belongs to us and doesn't belong to you. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So the only way to really get your money, like really get your money is you got to, we got to grade the key cards. Right. True. And I that, agree. that is a process that will take some time, but you will, Extract every ounce of value. I would imagine you guys have the ins and outs to do this where I wouldn't. Yeah. Mario brings up a great point. I mean, getting cars in front of buyers consistently is definitely harder than it looks. But thankfully, over the last decade, Marcel's met some of the biggest names in the hobby and we've helped build connections across marketplaces. Between Marcel and myself, we've sold over 100,000 cards in just the last two years, whether it be through eBay stores, card shows, or at a store in Las Vegas. We're definitely excited to take Mario's cards and get them to the marketplace. Okay, so we're going to take your loose cards, which okay. oddly enough are okay. really crazy cards. We're going to grade right. these for you, All right. and then we're going to loop back and show you the grades and then decide what to do. All right. You Sounds cool good. with that? I'm very cool with that. Thank yeah. you so much for spending the evening with us. It's yeah, been a thank pleasure. You for yeah. Thank you, Marcel. Mario. Yeah, thank you. Betcha. Great story. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Incredible. They were just such an incredible couple. Um, don't you just, doesn't it just make you want to collect? You see a guy like that who just gets so excited. He loves telling us. I mean, he could have probably told us stories till tomorrow morning. Kind of. <laughs> I, just, I love collecting when I see guys like that. It makes me just want to go home and just keep collecting more. So, okay, so we just spent four hours with Mario and Diane. Incredible time with them. Just a sweet couple. Great friendship, I can tell. It was really authentic. But we realized we weren't going to purchase the collection. We walked out with a box of loose cards, some really good loose cards that we're going to send off to get graded. And we're going to help Mario understand where his grades sit and what the value of the collection might be. We don't even know if we're going to sell them for him. But it's a favor you're going to do. And yeah. if we'll sell them, we'll sell them. If we don't, we don't. But I love the collecting piece of this. I do. It was awesome. Yeah. Great people. I'm yeah. glad we can help them out.
Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Super fun night. Right, fun. Go get some food? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. I'm so hungry. Me too. What an incredible trip. It's always a pleasure chasing with Marcel, especially when that trip includes great coffee, good cards, and amazing people. Now, if you're ever in San Diego, be sure to swing by and visit Ross's Cards and Coffee. The cup of Java is already worth it, and who knows, you might even run into Drew Brees or Russell Wilson. Now, Mario, that collection, right? Well, we were excited to leave with a few of his best cards to help get them graded. I want to show you a few right now, and I'm going to let you guess the grades they came back with. First is the 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth number 181. What do you think? Well, this came back as a PSA 2, and it has a value of $13,000. Second is the 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth number 53. What do you think on that one? Well, this one came back as a PSA 1.5, and, and it has a value of $11,000. Third is the 1949 Bowman Satchel Page Rookie number 224. This one was an absolute blazer, and it came back as a PSA 3. Approximate value for this, $4,000. Fourth is the 1933 Gaudi Lou Gehrig, number 92. This one ended up coming back as a PSA 1 and is valued at $3,000. And finally, my favorite of the bunch, number 5, is the 1950 Bowman Jackie Robinson, number 22. This one is absolutely phenomenal, and it came back as a PSA 3. Approximate value on this is $3,500. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for sticking around. We'll have plenty more to show you in the future. Keep chasing.